Well, let's bring you to today's news then and to Lebanon. Ten firefighters have been killed in an Israeli airstrike in the southern town of Binta Jubail. Hezbollah, meanwhile, has fired a salvo of missiles at Haifa in the north of Israel, injuring ten people there. At the same time, the bombardments of Beirut remain intensive, including near the airport this afternoon. Well, let's go live to Beirut. Rawad Taha is our correspondent covering developments for us. Rawad, tell us first of all about these strikes this afternoon. As I say, they appear to be very close to the country's only airport. So, yes, indeed, the last uh, airstrike roughly around uh, an hour ago uh, targeted an area that is very close in proximity to Beirut's uh, airport. Shortly after that, we uh, saw a statement coming from the Israeli uh, army that mentioned that this is uh, a precise airstrike. Uh, usually after such statements, uh, 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 the analysis uh, here in Lebanon is that this is a targeted assassination rather than an attack on infrastructure or weapon facilities, uh, as uh, we have been receiving uh, some sort of uh, 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 notifications beforehand, before uh, any airstrikes on Beirut southern suburbs at night, if it was targeting facilities. But when uh, the airstrikes happen all of a sudden and we see that uh, warning uh, or a message from the Israeli army, it means that this is most probably uh, some sort of a targeted assassination. Uh, who is the target of that assassination is still uh, unclear until uh, this moment. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, overnight, we saw uh, a significant number of airstrikes targeting Beirut's southern suburbs, as well as targeting areas outside of Beirut and its southern suburbs, including in the district of uh, Alay, as well as continuous rounds of airstrikes in uh, southern Lebanon. And Rawad, let's talk about what's going on politically in Lebanon as well, because those in the opposition today, I understand, have issued a statement talking about the need to nominate a new president in Lebanon in the midst of this crisis. Just tell us a bit about that. So uh, we've heard from more than uh, 30 MPs. Uh, these are the MPs who are in the opposition. Usually these are the MPs uh, opposing Hezbollah and its alliance. Uh, they have been out of power since uh, the last uh, elections or uh, since the past five years. The statement by the opposition for the first time calls for the implementation of all uh, UN resolutions, including 1701. Uh, which uh, indicates that the Lebanese army should be present south of the Litani River, as well as UN Resolution 1559, which indicates subliminally that the opposition is calling for uh, some sort of a larger uh, solution to, uh, to Hezbollah uh, in uh, Lebanon. Also important is the fact that they called in that statement for UN observer forces uh, to expand their mandate uh, from southern Lebanon to include uh, the border with the Syria, so the borders in the north and the east side of the country. Uh, uh, also, as well, uh, there was an explicit call for uh, electing a president even before any ceasefire is achieved, and only that president uh, with the parliament is able to form a new uh, government that could lead the country into a different pathway. Now, we've heard that from the opposition members, but also shortly a while ago, we've heard a statement uh, coming from uh, uh, the uh, former president of the, uh, pro uh, the Socialist Progressive uh, Party, uh, Walid Jumblat, who is uh, considered also the leader of uh, the Druze sect here in Lebanon. We've heard something, something that kind of echoed this statement along the way with a call for implementing the 1701 resolution and for electing a president even before any ceasefire and delinking the negotiations regarding the frontier in Lebanon with the front in Gaza. So we're seeing some more of a political movement on the ground from the opposition and other major political actors calling for a ceasefire, calling for putting an end to this war and for electing a president as soon as possible. Rawad Taha for us live in Beirut. Thanks very much indeed.